Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we're taking a look at the Euteranus. This is an incredibly important dinosaur for furthering our understanding of feathered dinosaurs. The fossils of Euteranus were described and announced in 2012 by feathered dinosaur expert Zhu Xing, who I talked about in the Microraptor video. Euteranus is known from three nearly complete fossil specimens, an adult, a subadult, and a juvenile, acquired from a fossil dealer who found the fossils in Liaoning province, China. The fossils were dated to approximately 125 million years ago during the early Cretaceous. The Euteranus has been placed in the Tyrannosaurus genus, which of course opened up the debate about whether T. rex itself had feathers, but more about that later. Obviously, the big announcement about Euteranus was the fact that it had feathers. All three known specimens show details of preserved feathers in differing parts of the body. These three specimens taken together show good evidence that the Euteranus was covered in feathers, and not just at the juvenile stage, but throughout its adult life also. The Euteranus was not the first or only known Tyrannosaur to have had feathers, like some news reports claimed at the time of its discovery. The first Tyrannosaur discovered to be feathered was actually a Dylon, which was named in 2004, also from China. But whereas the Dylon was about the size of a large dog, the Euteranus was huge, and it is the current record holder for the largest feathered dinosaur. It weighed in at 1,400 kilograms, that's about 3,100 pounds, and was at least 8 or 9 meters in length. That's 40 times bigger than Bipiosaurus, a Therizinosaur, and the previous record holder for the largest feathered dinosaur, and another zoo discovery. So what was the purpose of the feathers? Obviously, for a dinosaur of this size, flight is out of the question. The feathers themselves were 15 centimeters long and probably simple in structure, and the main use would have been for insulation, but also possibly used for display as well. The plumage would be similar to the plumes of today's flightless emus. It's always been assumed that the huge dinosaurs of the Cretaceous had bare, scaly skin, and this makes sense if we look to modern gigantic animals such as elephants and rhinos, which are virtually hairless. Their huge bodies lose heat very slowly, and they don't need the insulation that their smaller cousins do. Also, the Cretaceous was a very warm period in Earth's history. Having a large body covered in insulating feathers in a global warm period just wouldn't make sense. But we need to examine some of those facts. Even during the warm Cretaceous, there were some cooler periods, and areas like China, where Euteranus lived, were colder. Recently, data has been compiled indicating that the Liaoning region was cool during the early Cretaceous, its average temperature being about 10 degrees C. In this case, the insulation of Euteranus makes sense. It could be that the Euteranus was the Tyrannosaur equivalent of the woolly mammoth. Zhu suggested that the Euteranus was cold adapted, and that the Tyrannosaurus of warmer climes were scaly skinned and not insulated in the same way. I'll cover this in more detail when I cover Tyrannosaurs in a future video in this series. Euteranus has not just raised more attention for large feathered dinosaurs, it has also raised other questions regarding Tyrannosaur behaviour. Specifically, did Tyrannosaurs hunt in packs, and or did they live in family groups? The fact that two juveniles were found with an adult does lend some support to the latter question, and it's not the first time that juveniles have been found near adult tyrannosaurs. The pack hunting theory, however, is a little harder to establish. Some paleontologists recognise that tyrannosaurs might have formed mixed groups, where the smaller, more agile juveniles would drive prey towards the jaws of an adult tyrannosaur that was better able to make the kill. Others, however, have hypothesized that they may have been like Komodo dragons and killed each other in competition over a carcass. Assuming the collection of the three individuals is not some freak random occurrence such as a flood washing together only three Euteranus and no other dinosaurs together, this may yet indicate further evidence for the support of pack hunting in dinosaurs, particularly the large theropods. Well, that's all I have for you today, and as always, I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. If you did, please let me know by leaving a like and or a comment down in the comment section below. Please check the description of the video for any links you might need to my Twitter, my Discord server, and my Patreon account. 
If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and please do come back next time for some more talks here at Shredder Zoo. Goodbye.